my beloved, you will have left a great, great debt if you will have not beget somebody. The, how many pastors are here? Just without making hassles. Yes, these are pastors. These are, but you got yeah. what you're doing in corner. Yes. And thank you. Therefore, you are mentors. And now, mentorship does not have a Bible school. If you have one, I don't know it. And also, passing the mantle, it is a must. That one is a must. But there are not many. In Kenya, we love having good meetings, evangelistic and pastoral meeting. But that area is much left. So if you don't mind, turn with me or you normally say that. But these days, they are a digital. And you put uh, words here that can be read in a distance. John chapter 20, verse 20 to 23. If we can, yes, there it is. When he had said this, when he had said this, yes, um, he showed them his hands and his side. Then his disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Because he had been crucified, he is now risen, but they have not realized that Jesus is risen already. So they were glad when they saw the Lord. So Jesus said to them, peace to you. As the Father has sent me, or as my Father has sent me, King James, uh, I also send you. Now it means, my disciples, you are going to have a responsibility, not me all the time. And so the disciples had it. And then continue a little bit here. He said, receive, he breathed to them. And they said, receive. He said, receive the Holy Spirit. And in other words, Jesus was pointing to that great day Apostle Peter preached on the day of Pentecost. But before then, Jesus himself breathed to his disciples who were next to his heart. And so he told them, whosoever sin you remit or retained, they are retained. And those sins that of any, let us begin again. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. And if you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Now, he gave them power, and that power came from above. He gave them power to punish sin. You remember when Ananiah and the Savaira, when they came uh, and brought an offering to the, uh, to, the, I mean, to the temple, the Lord showed it to Peter. Is this your offering fully? Oh, yes. And of course, he said, why do you receive the Holy Ghost? And before he could finish it, they died. They fell dead. They fell dead. And so I want us to understand, beloved, don't sleep because I'm speaking on. I'm not going too long. And <laughs> so now here we read it. Then also the area of uh, mentorship. Jesus said also, John 15, 16, he says, I, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, that you should go forth and bring fruit, and that your fruit should remain. I, I hope I say this. So, and, I don't know, King James, or, or I'm an old, as old as I am, as, so is King James. <laughs> the new King James, NK. Yes, original. Yes, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you. In other words, appointed you.
to me now that's where mentorship comes and then that you should go forth and bring fruit and that your fruit should remain fruit here means souls that are one and drawn to jesus praise god now quickly i want us to go quickly also mentorship means follow 11 chapter verse 1 of 1 corinthians says this 11 chapter of 1 corinthians verse 1 he said, if you, if you be ye followers of me, that's Apostle Paul, even as I am also of Christ. In other words, Paul tells you, my beloved brother, um, my beloved brother Julian tells you, follow me. He does not say, follow me. No, the word of God, by their fruits, you shall know them. So you begin. That is areas of mentorship. Praise God. I have seen men and women in my life who say, you are my mentor. And you wonder, when did I mentor you? Your life reflects your life, the, the life of another. Praise God. If I ask you now, how many of you love the man of God, Chula? All of your hands would go up, I believe. And the same, for my, and the same thing. To my son, my beloved brother, uh, JB, that you can also do, and other ministers. And so I don't want to take away your, your time. Now, to the time of mentorship, 1 Kings 1919. 1 Kings 1919. If you have them there, 1 Kings 1919, it says, so he departed, that is Elijah. So he departed there and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was blowing, uh, blowing the 12, 12 yoke of oxen before him. And he, and he with the 12 and Elijah passed by and cast his mantle upon him. And if you want to follow the rest, Elisha, left the, the plow and the oxen, and there he began running after Elijah. Praise God. He began to run after Elijah, and then, of course, if you follow on, Elijah turned around. What have I done for you? He didn't explain. My Lord, let me go and slaughter the, I mean, say bye to my father and my mother, and so on, and I will follow you. Praise God. Now, I want you, my brethren, there is power in the mantle, power in putting a mantle in you, upon you. Now, the mantle we have today is the anointing of the Holy Spirit upon you, and that becomes the testimony. Coming quickly, because I don't have time now to, to quote, but if you come to the book of Acts, chapter five or six, seven, there, one of those chapters. And they were having time with a terrible, hard time with the Pharisees. But the Bible says, when they saw Peter and John and the rest of the, the disciples walk, they walked like Jesus. They spoke like Jesus. They, 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 they made all the movement like Jesus. And the Bible says, and seeing the cripple who had been healed and was uh, there, these enemies of the cross, they had no word to say against them. In other words, the power of God was flowing during that time so much that movement, even at least the shadow of Peter, was healing the sick. Praise God. And now, therefore, finally, let me say, my sons and daughters in the kingdom, let me tell you, make the effort you can to reach the unreached than never before. Make the way you can make that reach those men and women who can be reached. That's the fruit of your service. Hallelujah. 
And so, my brethren, I don't want to go further than that. I am saying, may God bless you. But then, uh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Just one more, one more point here. Psalms 24, verse 6, and also 23. Let us begin with 23. Psalms 24, verse 3, and then also 6, and that is it. Yes. Who shall send ascend into the hill of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? Answer comes from verse, uh, following verse, he that, okay, he that has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not uh, lifted up his soul to, to vanity, nor has one it is it will continue five. He shall receive the blessing of, of, from the Lord and the righteousness from the, from the God of his salvation. Six, this is the generation, read with me, this is the generation which seek him, which seek him. Say, say together, which seek him. All right. Uh, that, that is seek your face. All right. Oh, Jacob, or oh, oh, God of Jacob. Praise God. The generation, time cannot allow. But in your own time, if you can read Psalms 102 and verse 18, the generation that shall be created that time shall praise the Lord. And then also, Psalms 18, 18, no, no, Isaiah 18, 18, Isaiah 18, 18, this shall be written. All right, no. Yeah. Isaiah 18, 18. Yes. 18, 18, verse chapter, no, 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 chapter. Correct, 18, chapter 18, and the verse 18, oh, 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 oh. yes, no, 8 verse, no, I've got it, 8 and verse 18, all right, behold, I and the children whom the Lord has given me are for signs and wonders, where in Israel, in Kenya, where in Kenya, from the Lord of hosts, who dwelleth in Mount Zion. Then 102, verse 18. 102, verse 18. Behold, I and the children, Bible says, Behold, I and the children to come, and the people who shall be created during that time. They are for praise and Lord. This is a prophet, prophecy at a distance. It was given. Now it's taking place. May God bless you, give you. I will ask now, my brother Masinde. Thank you. I want Julian to come and stand here. Pastor T, come and stand next to Julian. George Bacharia, are you still here? This is how you know those, those who are still in the meeting. I want this museum to stand here. Come and stand here, Papa. Come on this side, come on my left. These are the men who preach to us. And we preach to the generation of Julian. And the generation of Julian has reached out to this generation. These are four generations right here. You must understand what God promised the fathers. Can I continue? What God promised Abraham. Isaac saw it, but never entered. Jacob saw it, but never entered. These are the sons of Israel who come into it. <laughs> Your generation that is rising now, that's why I, I was praying and thanking God for my brother 
uh, Mwangi and Masharia because the generation you are reaching now channel their energy because that's the generation we are talking about they have been appointed for praise they have been appointed to show the glory of God the things that the generation of Zem Amboleo Mse Jo Kayo Silas Owiti Philemon Wachara First of Evangelion in Uganda the things that they saw and they taught us we have passed on to this generation look what they are doing now there are some things that I has not yet seen he has not yet heard they have not entered the understanding of any of us but those are things that God has prepared for your generation don't mix your legs make sure you enter those things Dennis you should have run here when I was calling the others it is now this generation that shall usher that generation to capture what we are talking about they could only serve the purposes of God in their generation we have served the purposes of God in our generation Julian is serving the purpose of God in his generation you've got to serve the purposes of God in your generation that's why that encounter is very important now listen to what I'm going to say don't look for mantles look for the spirit what is passed on is the spirit Elijah gave Elisha a mantle but when he asked him a question what do you want he said I want a double portion of what your spirit what is passed on is not a mantle it's spirits God told Moses I'll take of the spirit that's on you and put it on them not mantle spirit that's on you when Jesus breathed on them he said receive the Holy Spirit in other words as the father sent me I'm sending you the father did not give me a credit card he did not give me money he did not give me food he gave me the Holy Ghost receive the same and go and do more than what I've done stop looking for mantles start looking for the spirit that's operating on Julian the spirit that's operating on Mse Mamboleo the spirit that's operating on my life that's what you should pray for and don't go for this for anything lower than what you have seen in my life Jesus told his disciples as you receive the Holy Ghost those who believe in me shall do what I do and even greater you got to start seeing which are more than what we have seen don't try to replicate what we did go for what I has not seen what ear has not had what Mzee Mamboleo never even dreamt about that's what you should go for receive that grace thank you papa that's our gift from Rema Feast to you thank you very much oh you are here Asante. Weche kam quickly. Kujia mshike bukone ya mzee mtere mka na epole pole. Kujia ni mshike bukone ya mzee mtere mshe. Nina hatu kutoka chini na nyumu kwa hapa. Uyu mzee haki anguka hapa mtaniona. Tutakuta na nyuma ya tent. Yes. Let us celebrate this mzee. You should thank God you met me after salvation. Tunge kutana kabla ya kufu nilikuwa mbaya. Si ni wala tunasikia ukiuliza polisi watakwambia. Ile mambo tulifanya kabla tujafika miaka 20 ilikuwa mbaya. Huyu mzee ndiye aliniweza na injili. Bigieni makofi hiyo mzee. Ndiye aliniweza na injili. As we stand like that, can we put our hands together and receive the spouse of the deputy president, Pastor Dorcas, is in the house. If you don't like Bishop Mchungaji Dorcas.
Nilikuwa karibu ni malize Rema Fist Mwambie ndeni nyumbani turudi mwaka ujao Bwana asifiwe sana Welcome mchungaji We are glad you have come to join us We thank God for you God bless you How many of you are ready for the word? I say how many of you are ready for the word? How many of you are ready for the word? Coming to us from the pearl of Africa. The great country of Uganda. My second home in Africa. The city of Kampala. Let us welcome the grace upon Apostle Grace Rubega. Welcome, man of God. The Bible says, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And you have come in the name of the Lord. And you are blessed. In Jesus' name. Amen. Media, can you put up the bio very quickly before it begins? Come on, let's celebrate Jesus. To him be the glory, the honor, and praise now and forever. That only one true wise God. Come on, let's celebrate Jesus. I have been filled since yesterday. I was crying because of what I'm seeing in Kenya. Come on, let's celebrate Jesus. For some of us, nothing brings tears to our eyes like seeing the God we believed be revealed to men and perform what he is performing now. Let's celebrate God for the gift on Reverend Kula. Man of God, I sincerely pray for you. I know the weight and burden that you hold in this land. And the graces that are yoked tonight who all feel the same thing, we might have not have the language enough to articulate, but all the ministers, the pastors, the prophets who are here, the men who left their churches to come and serve in Remafest, the ministers that have ministered before, the people who are serving to the last person, the ushers, the, the people playing the piano, the, the, the people in welfare, come on, let's celebrate them. It's an honor to have, to witness four generations of the anointing. This is what God can do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We love you. The Lord. Allow me to worship God in a song and my nerves will calm down. <laughs> What gift of grace is Jesus my Redeemer? There is no more from heaven now to give. He is my joy, my right to 
righteousness and freedom my steadfast love my deep and boundless peace to this Take your seats. Thank you, Jesus. Whoever made microphones. Reverend Julian, why don't you borrow me your microphone if this one fails? Are we okay now? Okay, we're good. Okay, stand by. 
Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Are you ready for the word? <laughs> now, for those of us who came later, you missed quite a lot in whatever God has been expending through the ministers that have stood on this altar. And I would recommend that in the spirit of receiving whatever God has prepared, I pray that if you miss the service, you can go back online and make sure you watch it. And I mean all, I mean all, praise the Lord. Because if you notice, many of us were building on the conversations that we had begun earlier. When I was here on Wednesday evening, I began a conversation on covenants and sonship. And I tried to expound on the difference between serving as a servant, as a slave, and serving under, as a son. The elevation of glory that comes with a priest that is first a son. And we were asking ourselves the question from where I want to build again, that indeed the prophetic oracles have spoken that there's a very great move that is happening in Africa. And I believe that this is the time that God wants to use Africa to revive the world. That is no doubt about that. But there was a question, what blueprint have we defined to have some sort of order in the things of the spirit? What pattern have we defined? Because if we think that we are going to propagate the gospel without a distinctive pattern, then we miss the way of God. We must understand that the things of the spirit bear a certain order and that wherever the Lord has given or will give us the grace to export this message, first it's expedient to find men where they are and understand their cultures, their visions, their experiences, their orientations, and then reconcile with where God wants to take them. And by that wisdom and humility of spirit in the unity of the faith, then we are able to continue his work and we must appreciate that it could express itself in other dimensions as it continues to extend. But notwithstanding, something remarkable has happened or is happening in Africa. Ramafest is one of those stories. Fanero back home in Uganda is one of those stories. And many other young men and women whom God is raising at a speed faster than we can count. And I'm certain in the next five to 10 years, the picture of the church in Africa is going to look so distinct. Yes. You've seen what God is doing through our women and men of God uh, of the psalmistry anointing. When I was listening to the choir here, re worshiping, I thought for a point and for a, for a moment and I was like, there was a time we only knew songs written from without, but now our own, are, are, are raising sounds that every, any person can connect to at that level. I, I celebrate God for what he is doing. Praise the Lord. So I left the question in what is the pattern? And this for most of the part will touch the most well-meaning ministers, believers who have understood the responsibility of not just uh, receiving this salvation and the demands that God requires of it, primarily that we receive Jesus Christ, A, eh? but that we will get into the place of the knowledge of the truth enough to, to serve him. The Bible is very clear that the prophets, the apostles, the teachers, the evangelists, all of these are doing one work, to perfect the saints for the work of ministry to the edification of the body. That literally means that everybody at the sound of my voice one day you're going to be faced with a question of what is your assignment on the earth. We're not going to only lean or glean from the hand that heals, that transforms, that delivers, but at one particular point, one of the fundamental qualifications of your maturity is the demand you will feel in your spirit to give to God having understood what he has put in you. Praise the Lord. Now, the question then comes, 
what template, what blueprint? You could generically say, well, we are following the Bible. Yes, all of us are following the Bible. We have seen revivals come through over the years, and there were two following the Bible. And some were short-lived, some were long-lived. I don't have all the answers. I'm also a student of the same conversation. But of the things that I have seen, touched, tested concerning that word of life, these are the things that I give to those that I'm able to communicate to, that they might have some fellowship with us, for our fellowship is truly with the Father. Uh, Papa JB said it rightly, that you serve the purposes of God in your generation. I shudder at our children and how they are going to reveal God. Because there is, we all can agree that there is a law that has been set in motion that the glory of the latter church shall be greater than the glory of the former. That excites my spirit, that we are better versions of our fathers and definitely our children should be better versions of us. Praise the Lord. But while we have this conversation then, especially the ministers who are here, the sound of my voice, those people who have given themselves wholly, some who refused to be pilots to serve God, some who abandoned, you know, some accolades in the world and they said, you know, let me choose to follow the Lord Jesus. I was a banker myself and I was going up the ladder very fast and that is when the Lord said, that is permissible and I'll bless you there, but I have something bigger. Are you ready to say yes? And I said yes. I went without knowing. And many of us can agree that ministry sometimes can be a very heavy burden. I'm talking to those pastors who stand on the altars every Sunday, who are baptizing those who are born again, who are committing or dedicating children every Sunday, who are sitting in the married counselings, who are at the funerals every day, who are at the graduations, who smile in the morning because you're celebrating with a neighbor or your church member who has gotten their degree. And in the evening, you have to change that face and cry with a family that lost their beloved. And then go back after one hour and celebrate with another family that has just had a child. It's a hard emotion. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. The weight of ministry and the demand of, 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 of whatever is needed for us to do what is required can be a very heavy toll. We have heard or found even believers giving up, ministers giving up, saying, you know what? Or some contradicting, so conf, uh, not even contradicting, that, that's a very strong word. In, in, they have sworn to vanity and compromised their convictions because after waiting on God without a template to follow, they chose the shorter route and transacted with things that we're not supposed to transact with. They are repentant, they are saying, God help me out of this. But everything they have built is standing on those foundations. That to go back and, and rebuild, they have to break everything that they have represented, which is a very tall order for, for, for some of them. But notwithstanding, the church of Jesus Christ is still going forward. Hallelujah. Now, in the conversation of the template, like I said, for me, it was very simple that uh, I had started a ministry earlier, ran it for three years, and it was a success, but predictable success, predictable success. And um, I, by the sheer masses of God, some of you know this story, the Lord Jesus appears to me and tells me, I want to teach you how I build because you are building. I was not doing anything wrong. I was not living, living a crazy life. I was tithing. I was doing everything right. But something was amiss in this conversation. And I realized then that there was a principle, there were patterns that I had to understand in my spirit. And it took me 10 years to understand these things. Now, I can only share what has worked for me. I'm not going to share what hasn't worked for me. And neither am I even qualified to disqualify another man in what works for them. But I believe that even with the anointing, there are spiritual lineages. And I've shared that before. As you continue to grow in God, you're going to find that there are people who you find yourself gravitate to, inclined to, because... Their way in the Lord reflects your convictions of that same God. So for most of the part, I know that I'll appeal, especially to the younger generation, and my kind of stock that didn't have the opportunity to sit under great, great, you know, many great people, you know, who, who sat in, 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 you know, and, and 
you, you were not known by a famous preacher, so nobody would point at you and say, you know, come up and do this. Sometimes I admire, you know, those who really had that a greater work in there because I can imagine that they will not pay the prices we paid. And I pray that they understand how fortunate they are. Praise the Lord. But as we continue in this conversation, we must touch the foundation of things. And I want again, because the nature of uh, my ministry as an apostle primarily, I'm a planter. I'm a planter. Um, the kind of person who will make one sentence, and if you're a reader, you can get seven sermons. If you, if you know how to water, you can actually pick seven points out of one sentence. It's, it's just how God has made me. I'm not boasting. I'm just testifying for we all know that a man can receive nothing except it be given him from God. And because I'm a planter, I will not have time to explain everything I want to break down in the few minutes that I have. But I believe that this conversation is going to continue, especially from East Africa and whatever God is doing here, because I feel that we are meeting and reconciling so much with what God has already done and continues to do with our brethren in West Africa and the rest of the world. I'm excited for what we see God is doing in the South of Africa as well. Things are coming up, and I don't know whether some of you are sensing, but something is awakening there. Hallelujah. Now, because of this conviction and design as a planter, I find that even as I'm preaching, I have been praying for those who are able to catch this, to be able to water it, because it takes a certain liberality of the spirit. It takes a certain, firstly, liberty of the spirit to pick from a planter and be able to water it. Of course, the scriptures are clear that he that watereth shall be watered also. That, that's just how the gospel extends, right? And among us, of course, are also people God has given grace to plant. But sometimes it's not always that fixed thing. I have found myself watering where some men have planted also. But in this instance, I feel that I will take the course of, of a planter, of course, cognizant of the boundaries that are required by wisdom and judgment to make sure that I don't go out of, or, of line. Many times we talk about lost sheep, <laughs> but we, we, we seldom talk about lost shepherds. But sometimes we too can get lost. And, and allow me to explain this. When the Bible speaks of uh, a lost sheep, when you go back to the Old Testament Jewish culture definition of a lost sheep, this was not a sheep that was missing. Some people get it wrong. It wasn't a missing sheep. A sheep was lost because if a shepherd had sheep and took them somewhere to graze, I don't know, my mic is in and out. It was okay. What are you touching? So if a shepherd went out to graze with a sheep, ideally, this shepherd will start showing the sheep the boundaries. You remember the stuff? Huh? Is it the road and the stuff? Huh? Which guides? Remind me, which guides? The stuff, yes. So when the sheep are going off astray from the boundaries of the property of the shepherd or the alluded space of the shepherd, they would get a staff and try to direct them off the, co the, the, the boundaries of the neighbor. And sometimes they did not even need to have steady boundaries. My, what's wrong with my mic? But there's something you touch and then it goes off. Leave it like that. Okay. So, sometimes they didn't have steady boundaries. But when a shepherd continued showing the sheep the lines, the boundaries for so long, they get to a point where they know where to end when they are eating. It's in them. Now, when these younger sheep were born, lambs, sorry, English, uh, the, many of them did not know where the boundaries would cross. So the mothers then would try to push them in because they know we don't eat past this. Now, when a lamb or a sheep that didn't know those boundaries crossed the boundary into the neighbor, that was called a lost 
sheep. So it's not lost because it's missing. And that's the danger, because they can be lost, yet they're available. They're in Sunday service, but they're lost. They're in the intercessory team, but they're lost. They're in the ushers, and they're also what? Lost. Why? Because there's no clear demarcation in their spirits in expressing themselves in the liberties that are expended to the vision of that ministry. Every ministry has a distinctive vision and therein are the liberties according to the graces given to that ministry. And for such, then there are principles and patterns that are designed by God to that shepherd according to the mandate he has given that shepherd. And it's the responsibility of that shepherd to teach his people these principles. Yes, there are those which are generic, but there are also those which touch the ministry of the man, the mandate of the man. Jesus had only three years of ministry. The way he would prepare 12 men is different from a man who has 40 years of ministry. Are we following what we're saying here? You see even how he classifies them. When he's talking to James, Peter, and John, it's different from when he's talking to the other nine or when he's talking to the twelve. Praise the Lord. When he was speaking to the twelve, you see he spoke differently from the way he spoke to the five thousand. Because he knew he was going. He needed the shepherds of the lamb, but he also needed the pillars. The Bible says, I think it's in Galatians chapter 2, when John Cephas and James saw the grace, which seemed to be pillars. He calls them which seemed to be pillars. Okay? He, he founded them as pillars. So the question was, what are the qualifications of a pillar? This man had three years. So the way he had to order and design the system, the, 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 the boundaries within the, liberty, within the liberties of expression, that he had to draw because of the time he had, are different from the shepherd who begins the journey of 10, 5, 15 years. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So, in speaking of sheep getting lost, sometimes I find that even as shepherds, sometimes we, we lose the boundaries in the liberties that we have in God because all liberty in Christ has boundaries. Or else then excesses are manifested among us and then we become trouble to those who observe us. They say, but are these Christians, are they born again? They, they, you're not necessarily doing something wrong, but you are, you are expended beyond right judgment. You're, what you're receiving as revelation from God is not really reconciling with your intellect to know how or what to do, what you should do, when you should do it. Some of us might call it self-control. But what of the self do you control when you're led of the Spirit? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So today I want to have this conversation really on defining more of a deeper level. You know, when I speak of deep, I'm talking of this vantage point of sight called deep. I'm not talking about height, right? There are realities in the Bible that touch how to help a man ascend into higher realms. But there are also realities in the Bible that help a man know how to dig deep in God. But never forget that you can only build as high as you have prepared in depth. You cannot build a twin-story building with a two-story foundation. So some of the things I want to share, they are really foundational. And they are important because they worked for me and I believe they will work for you. They, they are foundational. And every believer should know it, whether you're a pastor, a prophet, an evangelist, or you don't even see yourself in the fivefold, you're simply playing the piano. You, you should know these things. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 1, verses 18. Let's rush through huh, my time. Romans chapter 1, verses 18. He says, for God's holy wrath and indignation are revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who in their wickedness repress and hinder the truth and make it inoperative. 
these people quite honestly some of them don't do it deliberately they don't just say i'm going to set myself against truth and i'm going to hinder it but we find ourselves in there because of the ignorance because of the wrong foundations of our lives praise the lord jesus christ verses 19 he says, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them. For the invisible thing of, things of him from the beginning or from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. Even his eternal power and Godhead, men are without excuse. Let me explain this. He's saying he has a problem with them holding the truth in righteousness or your amplified bible would say they, they they suppress the truth and hinder it and make it inoperative because one one he said they whatever is supposed to be known of god is manifested in them for god has revealed it to them even the invisible things from creation, they are available for them. That they don't have an excuse. But they look like they don't know. Or, in essence, because of how they were oriented, they don't know how to connect in what has already been given to them through Christ. And so, they make the truth of God inoperative. I always challenge believers and I tell them, look, Forgive our semantics and vocabulary. Put those things aside. A time comes where we must be held responsible to the end that if it is the truth that we are preaching, it must make men free. If it is the truth that I'm preaching, it should be able to liberate the soul. I cannot teach about progress, and I'm not progressing. I cannot teach about increase and I'm not increasing. Praise the Lord Jesus. I cannot teach you about wealth and you're not wealthy. If what I'm speaking is the truth. Praise the Lord. So I'm not here really to disqualify or qualify anybody here. This that I'm preaching also puts a mirror on me to truly examine that if what we are preaching, what we are saying is a revelation, is truth, why doesn't it produce the results of truth? Why doesn't it produce the liberty that is duly expended through truth? And maybe, just maybe, we ultimately have to have a conversation of defining the truth. What is the truth? Pontius Pilate stood before Jesus Christ and asked him, what is the truth? He's asking the truth what the truth is. I can say the truth is Jesus Christ, but what does that mean? What does that really mean? It begins by firstly understanding the nature of God. It's very important. Understanding the nature of God. Understanding the nature of God. Because we, I have had truths that are not quite agreeable to the nature of God. And these are preached as the gospel. And two then, once we understand the nature of God, then we study his pattern through the person of Jesus Christ. That we don't know anyone who should have known that pattern like the person Jesus Christ. So then this man who knew that pattern, how did he live? How did he walk? How did he pray? How did he demonstrate power? What was his heart like? What does it mean to carry all wisdom and knowledge? What does it mean to humble yourself unto the cross? What does it mean to say that his life could not be taken, he could only give it? What does it mean if you're dealing with an incurable disease? And the Son of God says, my life can only be given. It cannot be.
taken. I lay down my life. No man can take it away. What does that mean? When you walk to the doctor and they tell you that, you know, this is stage four cancer and there's nothing that can be done on your life. Let God be true and every man a liar. That dying world there is not looking for cheaper copies of the Christ. They are looking for Christ. Hallelujah. And if he is the word and he is truth, then we must take that time and have a conversation of explicating this to the deeper level. So what I'm trying to share with you is depth. Remember I told you I'm a planter, so I can spend 70% of my time laying foundation because the ground has to be set right. You understand? Then I can plant my seed in the last 30 minutes. But it's important that I lay the ground first so we all are agreeable with where we are. Look at what he has done and given man. Everything that is known or should be known of God is manifested in your consciousness whether you know it or not. From the day you received the Lordship of Jesus Christ, something entered your spirit. You don't have a language for it. I think the Greek call it epignosis. That complete and perfect knowledge of the things of God, of things ethical and divine. It's complete, it's perfect, it's not lacking. It's, it knows God fully. But it's not yet explored. Because you have not tapped into it, you might think you don't have it. And sometimes the deception in trying to teach men to get what they already have in Christ. We make, he says, the truth of God in operative. He has said, as part of this inheritance, now I'm talking to sons of light, this definition of light here engages us to respond to the fact that everything that is known about God is evident and made plain, firstly, in your inner conscience. And therefore, it is ready to manifest itself or in the mind of God, it should be showing forth in your life. And he says, and all the invisible things from all creation are now clearly seen and designable. Even the Godhead that you are now without excuse. Let me explain this. When a baby is born, they don't know they can talk. They don't know they can walk. Right? They don't know that they have the tools to walk. But over time, as they continue to see other people walking, other people talking, they learn through imitation and they start walking and they start talking. The potential was created. It's innate in them. But it has never been explored because there's a process of growth. Now you must understand the place of growth. Growth really is the realization of what is already potently deposited in you. When you come to the realization of what is already in you, that's what they call growth. Growth is not discovering something outside you. Growth is discovering whatever God has already placed in the inside of you and to come to the realization that it's actually there and it's ready to function for you. There is nothing new God is going to do that he has not already done through the person of Jesus Christ. There is no sacrifice coming next. There is no prayer or fasting that you can pray and fast to move heaven beyond what Jesus had done or has done for you and I. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Sometimes when we get into this conversation, I find that, again, because we have not understood the spirit and the mind of grace, I find that some of us find ourselves enumerating in possibilities and graces that are beyond what even Christ could understand. When he said, greater work shall you do, we must understand who is the foundation, the chief cornerstone. It's in him we live, move, and have our own being. Every generation that is going to do greater than the generation before is just a generation that had the grace to glimpse in the light of what the generation before did not see because Jesus Christ is deep. You can be convinced that you know him and then tomorrow you meet another person and you discover you never knew him. 
I think for me, for most of the part, that's the thing that humbles me most. To know that all I know about God is not all he is. There's always a person who is going to exist somewhere and sometimes they, they, they might even not know what they're saying. But God might speak through them in a way that will awaken your spirit to recognize that this God is working in this individual also distinctly. Hallelujah. Now, let's think about it for a moment. Everything known of God is in you. The place that he has God knows it. The place that he has God knows it. But this carnal man is struggling to reconcile that conversation. Do we know God to be powerful? It's manifest in your conscience and it comes with the power and possibility for you to exercise yourself in that power. Do we know God to be wealthy? It's revealed and manifested in you, in your conscience that he is, and his ability becomes your ability. For this is love made perfect, that we might have confidence on the day of judgment. The Greek word there for judgment is crisis. For as he is, so are we in this world. That if a crisis comes in your life, if any day any crisis comes in your life, there is a confidence that should come out of you. Because as he is, so are you in this world. So it's not what would Jesus do. You don't first go and fall back and say, huh, in this instance, what would Jesus do? That's you separating yourself from him. No, the reality of this is, as he is, so are you. You have the thoughts, you have the mind of Jesus Christ. But there's a light of divine experience that must come on your spirit for you not only to appreciate, but to allow that experience to activate in your life. That's all we need, really. That's the beginning of the template. It's in understanding, firstly, what God has done through Christ. Before we think of going to the prayer mountains, fasting for 40 days, which we all do, and some I probably fast more, more than you or pray more than you. But really, my place of fasting and prayer is not to move God. No. It's to break my man to subjection to the will and purposes of that light that defines who I am already in Christ Jesus. Am I communicating? And he says, for the invisible things from creation have now been made visible. They are clearly seen even with the things that are created. The invisible things from all creations. It means nothing is hidden from the believer and they don't need to be a prophet. These are the glorious riches of the inheritance of the saints in light. Nothing is hidden from a believer. The Bible says you shall receive the Holy Spirit and he shall show you things to come. He shall lead you into all truth. For in him there is no lie. But the exercising of your human spirit to convince your carnal nature that I actually know you know, I used to read some portions of scriptures in the Bible like, you have an unction from on high, you know all things. Do you know what it means to know all things? Do you know all things? In the flesh, no. But in the spirit, yes. Those are the glorious riches of the inheritance. We don't inherit radio, radio, radio cassettes or Mercedes Benzes. We inherit a nature. We are partakers of that divine nature. Do you know what it's like to understand and appreciate that the invisible things, I, this, by the way, that I'm going to share, I'm going, I'm going to put a disclaimer that it can be a very dangerous journey for a person who is still young and carnal because familiar spirits enjoy and love to indulge men in their immaturity when we start this conversation. And so, what has happened to the church is we have refused to go there to protect the young. But in that then, we are killing them, they're not growing. 
I would rather we expose the truth for what it is. Then when we have the excesses, we take out those flames and say, brother, here you've gone beyond the boundaries. But it's important for the truth to be spoken as it should be. When the Bible says the invisible things from creation are now clear to a believer, do you know what it means? Everything not seen, the Bible says, creates what is seen, isn't it? By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were, are not made by things which do appear. Everything that is seen was made by something that doesn't appear. And God says that the substance and material of everything that made everything you see is visible to you. Do you know what I'm saying? If you want to sew a dress, you have the material. If you want to build a, 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 a ministry, you have the material. If you want to build the most successful business in the world, you have the material. If you want to get a medical breakthrough and perhaps give a healing or, or, or make a, 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 a drug to cure something that is incurable in the world, he says you have the material. The world is looking for answers. Even if a man doesn't know how to speak, but he can cast out a tumor, somebody will come and listen. Because there is no cure for that tumor. The problem is that if the man has the ability to cast out that tumor, but he's not imbued with knowledge enough to direct the soul that has received the miracle to the saving knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the purposes of God for that individual, don't underestimate the power of miracles. Some people say, ah, you know, miracles. No. Even Jesus needed them. But the double edge has said that it is in error for us to turn and make the word of God inoperative by giving excuse. That the reason why this is not working is because I'm in a third world country. The reason why this is not working is because I don't have a degree. I wish I, I spoke better English. The reason why this is not working is because I'm African. The reason why I cannot do this is because I didn't have this. You know, I could have been a better version of this, but my, my uncle left me when I was young, so I was raised on the streets. That's why I'm going to continue like this. I'm very quarrelsome because, you know, naturally my mother was quarrelsome, so you have to understand and receive me that way. God is taking to us to a place where we are not going to have excuse. Oh, you know, I'm a pastor for us. I was in the village there. Uh, in the village, you know, people don't pray. No. <laughs> the anointing on your life will make a village a city. The anointing on your life will make a village a what? A city. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I wanted to read us something here. I'm almost now starting to preach. Luke chapter 8, verse 16. God said, no man, when he has lighted a candle, covereth it with a vessel, or putteth it under a bed, but setteth it up on a candlestick, that they which enter in may see the light. No man. If it's not in the nature of man, it's also not in the nature of... Are we following? Because if, if, if he says no man, and yet man is created in the image and likeness of God, it means if he has put it in man, it's originally in God not to hide anything or cover any vessel that is lit. Let's first understand that. But here is the challenge. When we get to the next verse, he says, For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be known or come abroad. Many of us, because of our legalistic mindset, every time we read this portion of scripture, we talk about sin only. Brother Robert, what you're doing, eh? Nothing hidden shall not come to light. It shall come out, karma, karma, whatever. <laughs> You understand what I'm saying? 
We only see it through the lenses of sin. But can I elevate you to the place of understanding beyond sin? That if you are that light, if you are that light, now I'm starting to plant. He says, nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest. But also, if God is that light, nothing in his secret place shall not manifest to you. That is why the Bible speaks of the wisdom that was hid from the ages past for our glory. It was hid, yes, but it was for our glory. Why? Because he knew somebody would understand the nature of God and go search it out because it should be available for the man who wants it. The question is, are our eyes open to see what is already available? If it is God who has kept this secret, he says, nothing that is secret shall not be made manifest. Neither anything hid shall not be known and come abroad. If you are that light or that gift that is hidden from the world, he's also saying, there is no way you can be hid. There is no way you can be covered. There is no accusation that can bury you. There is no drama or reproach that can take you out if you truly are called of that God. He will preserve and sustain you until he exposes you. You, you might be ignored in one place, but you'll be attended in another. The point is, whatever God placed on your life, it has to come out. Somebody say, whatever God placed on my life, it has to come out. Whatever is in my spirit, of all that he is and has, it must work through me. And I'm not settling for less in Jesus' name. And then he told them the secret. He said, the secret is, take heed, therefore, how you hear. Because it's not about what you hear only. It's most important how you hear. We must study deeper the orientation of the man who's receiving knowledge. From where is he speaking? The Bible says that they desire to be teachers of the law, not knowing or understanding what they say, nor from whence they affirm. They don't carry the affirmation of things. They don't carry the foundation of the things that we are professing and hearing every day. I just ask myself, how do we sit with people and teach them every week, every week the same truths? But this, is, this individual doesn't change. You're planting every week, you're watering every week. Sometimes as pastors, we plant and then you realize, ah, if, if I don't water, and you probably don't have somebody near to water, you find yourself even watering where you planted. But whatever it is, if we are teaching this person the whole week, the whole year, and some even have their degrees in different disciplines of the faith, why aren't we seeing the results in our lives? And the answer then goes deeply to how are we hearing what we are hearing? How are we hearing what we are hearing? Before you talk about what, how are you hearing it? One time I wanted to exercise myself in these invisible things from creation. This is now where I put the disclaimer, but you'll understand me. Don't worry. It's okay to give you the liberty first. We'll put the boundary. So one of those days I said, if everything that is of the invisible realm is already open and clearly defined to me father then i should see what the usual eye cannot see in scripture because i see the invisible form the bible speaks of <laughs> him who saw the god who was invisible he saw the invisible god huh 
It was Moses, right? He saw the invisible God. So if everything invisible is open to me, I ask God, take me to an experience and make visible for me. Now this I speak the truth in Christ. In the instant, I found myself in the body on the day of crucifixion. See, when the Bible says we're crucified with him, some people don't understand the literal meaning of being crucified with him. Some people behold Jesus on the cross. They don't see themselves Do you understand what I'm saying? I knew that I was going to now go into strange territory. But this is where Bible crucified with. I, I was carried to that event. And all I could see was through the eyes of Christ that day when he was at the cross at Calvary. And... I saw Mary, John, and this and that. And so I asked, where is Joseph? He had died. That's why he handed him over to John. These were all experiences I'm seeing. Otherwise, a son, a, can, a, a first son, cannot be in charge of his mother if the father is existent. You follow? He has to die first, especially in Middle Eastern culture, for the first son to take responsibility. And if he's to die and he has a death wish, death wish, then he can hand that responsibility over to somebody else. And he handed it over to John. But in that experience while I'm there, now the invisible is clearly visible before my eyes. I hear the word, I see the lips speaking. Forgive them, for they know not what they do. And for the first time in that experience, I discovered that Jesus Christ was not talking about those who crucified him. He was talking about all human nature because even those weeping, by reason of the Adamic nature, that fallen nature, none weeping that they didn't have the ability to crucify the Christ. Are you seeing where I'm coming from? This is not just a journey of I'm reading, but it's a place where my spirit at that point is seeing visible what happened on the cross. I'm not imagining it. I'm in the experience. And it's seen that God starts to explain to me the depravity of man. That even I who is as righteous as you can think, I can be equally dangerous. You're not different from the man in prison. You're not different from the sister you're accusing that she's sleeping around. You're not different. The, that nature, if you were in that nature, there is nothing any man is doing on us that you could not do. Are you following what I'm saying? And this came through a what? An experience of the invisible now made visible. And then one day, a couple of years later, I'm giving you a few experiences. I'll make my point. A dear angel appears to me in the vision and carries me to the beginning of time. These are the invisible becoming visible. And you know why? Because I believed it. There's no formula, fasting, prayer, all of that is important, but this, the most ardent formula is that you must believe that every invisible thing is available for your vision. Now, like I said, familiar spirits can take advantage of this, but the fruit, the Bible says you shall know them by their fruit. When a man has seen the Lord, you will know that he has seen the Lord. When a man is not borrowing phrases, you will know that this man has seen the Lord. And if a man is anomalous, they're behaving themselves out of principle and pattern. It doesn't matter how much revelation they say they have received, they're not on course. But listen, 
So I'm taken to the end of the, the beginning of life. And then God starts to show me the dimension, the distinctions of the anointing. I was amazed. And I've shared this with my church members. Some of them know it, like folk know it, but they are going to hear things they've never heard before today. I'm going to build on that. That, for example, when the Bible says that no man born by a woman was greater than John, I was taken to study the anointing on John the Baptist. Just John. Because Moses was born by a woman. Elijah was born by a woman. Ezekiel was born by a woman. Elisha was born by a woman. Noah was born by a woman. This man was not born, this man John, he said, the Bible says, none born by a woman was greater. That means in rank in the spirit, John had a distinct anointing, but I never saw lame men walking. I never saw John raising the dead, but I saw him serving the purposes of God in his generation. Are we following? That sometimes we are so one file and one dimensional that because we know that every, this, that generation was full of evangelists who are healing, therefore we can only get the anointing by everybody doing or being a cheap copy of the great originals that came before and were doing that one thing. And we limit God to that dimension. John, we don't see John opening a blind eye, but he says none born by a woman is greater. These are not things I learn in Bible school. These are things I am taken because the curtain, <laughs> the curtain has been torn. I can see. No, I'm talking to you who still discipline yourselves. This year I must read the Bible. I'm reading the Bible. Uh, 365 days of reading the Bible. All of that is important. But you miss the experience. This thing is supposed to be an experience. It's not supposed to be something you are fulfilling all righteousness to finish. Because you can read its words and miss the shepherd. Are you following what I'm saying? I'm going deep now. So I see this anointing on John. And then I see that the only one which is not born by a woman is Adam. So I see Adam more anointed than John. Because who got it? Somebody got it in the back. Because he has said none born by a woman is what? Greater. And Adam was not born by a woman. That means there is a rank in Adam by reason of the anointing on his life that even the writer respects and says, no, when we talk about anointings on John, we're only talking about those born by women. We are not including this one. Otherwise, we would have said from creation. So I started to study the anointing on Adam, just Adam, the man, the anointing. But during that time, there were no blind eyes, there were no dead bodies, there was no governments to shake, there were no politicians to pray over, you know, there were few people to prophesy on. This man was anointed. Are we following what I'm saying? Then I see another priest appear called Mechudezek. But that one, he, he's, he's, he's out of our order. Because for, that one doesn't even have beginning of days. <laughs> Are we following what I'm saying? Then, a man appears to me who seemed to be a very great man of God. And he says, I want to show you another distinctive anointing. And he started to show me some distinctive anointings that came through the ages, generation after generation. Things that are older than me. Things that are older than me. I speak the truth in the Lord. They are older than me. And then, that was the day I realized that on the exception of the distinctions of the anointings, there are also lineages. That Reverend Julian, you could call many men instructors, but you couldn't call, call all fathers. 
that there was somebody who had something in them that defined the essence of your anointing and glory. You don't even know how, but you just know that when you see them, you see yourself somehow. That language is older than you. We're defining template here. And that spirit collectively, from one man to another, is all the spirit of Christ. He's just demonstrating or expressing himself in different forms through different people. That my way of ministry might be different from your way of ministry. That shouldn't disqualify you as a man of God or disqualify me as a man of God. Because there are people who understand me from where I speak from. And there are people who understand you from where you what? You speak from. If the invisible world is now made visible, it means nothing is literally hidden from you. That even when you look through the lenses of truth, the light of his glorious revelation is available to show you things that no man can ever teach you. This thing we call the relationship that we have with Jesus Christ is a place where God in your individual consecrations starts to make visible the invisible things. And then you realize that this thing you think is a challenge for you to take over, a mountain for you to climb, you realize that the problem is not that mountain, the problem is your vision. That if your eye was really open, that's why in Ephesians he calls it the eye of understanding. And you realize in Ephesians 1, 17, 18, the eye of understanding precedes the eye of knowledge. Today, we take in knowledge to understand. That's the wrong order. The right order is the understanding then that brings knowledge. He says that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, you may know. Am I communicating? The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, you may know. You can only know when understanding comes to you first. Understanding must precede knowledge. The eyes of your understanding. How mature are you? Take heed how you hear. What orientation, what order has been defined in your spirit before you read, by his stripes you were healed? Because the day God opens your eyes to honestly see, and this I have seen in Christ and can affirm on all men who are mightily used by God, they have a distinctive vision of God. They have a distinctive vision of God. Am I not an apostle? Have I not seen the Lord Jesus? They have a distinctive vision. The expressions might vary according to the language that God has given us. But in essence, there's a reconciliation of all things that brings these things together. Let me check my time. I still have a few minutes. There's a reconciliation of all things that brings these things together. When I discovered that, I repented. Because I met the word of God in operative in so many ways in trying to seek what was already available and open for me. But I could not access because I was not positioned right. That's why I tell believers positioning is everything. We all see from where we're positioned. If I take one step up, I see further. If I look this way and the direction of God is that way, then I, I cannot see what I'm supposed to see. We can never define direction without positioning. We can never define language if it cannot define our positioning. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So every time we're talking about positional truths, sometimes I look at 
how, how, how many excuses we give. Oh, you know, you can do that, but for us, we can't do it here. In 2013, nobody was seating 1,000 members in a weekly service in Uganda. That was a label on our land. That you cannot have a weekly service. I approached some of my friends, I told them, I'm going to start the biggest meeting you've ever seen. I told them, it's not possible. Why? I say, those things don't happen here. But these eyes had seen the invisible. And I knew that it was possible. Because it was already accorded to my order. By right and privilege, the anointing on my life could do and is going to do more. I studied my lineage. I know how I will die. I know my kind. I even know my teachers. As you continue to mature, even your teachers become fewer and fewer. I'm not saying you can't use resources, but your sources become few. Are you following what I'm saying? 612 branches are streaming now. Every Thursday, tens of thousands of people are praying. Now, people are saying, that's revival. Yes. But I'm trying to show you the foundation of this. There is a language, there is a positioning, but above all, there is a way I hear. This orientation must enter our hearts if we must believe for the revival, not only of Uganda, Kenya, East Africa, and the world. Yeah. That how we see things has to change. Reverend Julian, you're without excuse. You're without excuse. Whether Kenya wants it or not, it will hear you. <laughs> Do you understand? Come on. I'm telling you, men of God, whether the world wants it or not, they are going to hear us. Our accents might be warped, our English might be random, but they will hear. Because this is not even how we explain ourselves. No, it's how we had God. Because the how gave us understanding that when the what instructions came, the knowledge came, it came from a certain place of understanding. You have to behold the invisible to believe that you can't die early. You have to be, be, behold the invisible to discover that you can't be broke. You, can't, you have to have a full vision of the invisible to know that your ministry cannot fail. You have to see the invisible to know that nobody can bewitch you. You must... <laughs> Am I communicating? Because when I think of sickness, I see that he was wounded. It's not here. It's in my spirit. And how I receive that word, I receive it with all truth in conviction. Knowing that Jesus died. And if he really died for my sins, the devil has no power to put on me what God took away. And I refuse. I listen with understanding. But understanding comes through the experience of that light that shines on you to give you experiences through truth. We have to ascend to the place of receiving experiences through the word. Not those random dreams that I dreamt when a cat is chasing me, a dog was trying to take over my, I was, the tail of a cat was trying to, <laughs> no, these are the days, these are the years, this is a season where men are going to go to bed and dream Isaiah. Wake up. It was in that light on one morning I'm seated in a building. I'm standing in an old dilapidated building. I think I've never shared that story in Kenya. And then, Jesus enters that building. 
and walks to the corner of that building. There were two apostles. One of them was Peter. I knew them. There was a knowledge in me that I knew them. He hugged one of them, shook the hand of the other. Old building. He came through, looked at me again and smiled as he had entered, disappeared. So I'm screaming, I say, Jesus, why have you ignored me? And he disappears and I turn. And I enter this building and these two apostles were not there anymore. And a light shines through a small window. It had the background of gold. And in it were precious stones. And out of it was a glorious light shining on my face. I said, God, what is this sight? It took me seven months praying, fasting in some of those days. What did this mean? What did this mean? The man who appeared to me in my first vision to take me through the lineages of anointings came back. And this time he was on television. I'm walking through my father's living room. And he says, somebody's watching me. And you have questions on windows. You see a light coming through the window. And that saith the Lord. That the window means revelation. The voice of God spoke clearly that day. That I confirmed my presence by hugging one. I shook another man's hand. I will always confirm my presence with you through the spirit of revelation. I will speak through you, through you things that are older than you, greater than you, of greater language than then He starts to explain to me from that day when I start teaching, the power moves. Hallelujah. The presence of God intensifies every time I continue teaching. I don't need to pray. I just need to teach truth. That is why when I have preached truth, I don't need to pray for a sick man. I just need to call them. That's my nature. That's, that's, that's my design. I can't say that everybody's going to be like me, but I'm simply trying to explain my knowledge in the mystery, like Paul says. And I discovered my course. From then I knew my course. I knew the things that provoke power in my life. I know them. I'm sleeping in the night. Jesus wakes me up. He wakes my spirit. I'm still in the, in the flesh, sleeping. He taught a whole chapter of a verse and scripture I had never read. After a few hours, I wake up. I run to the Bible, and lo and behold, the very chapter and scripture I remember very well. And when I open it, it's the exact portion of scripture. I had never read it, but he had spent two hours speaking to me. So I discovered there's actually a God who can teach. Somebody receive it. I discovered. I discovered there was a God who can actually talk to you like a teacher talks to a student. And I say, God, you are real. And I remember one of those days I'm driving. I'm bypassing a very famous hospital, Mulago. And he comes and sits here. He says, I want to talk to you about this. And I'm weeping through people seeing me in the jam crying. They're saying, why is this young man crying? People are like, what's wrong with him? I'm weeping because the master is here speaking. I can hear him speak. Jesus is real. He's real. Whatever you regard to be invisible, God has deliberated that he's going to make it visible for you in the name of Jesus. This is why conferences like Crema Feast come to awaken those portals, to break forth, to 
waken up those wombs and plant something to open the eyes of somebody to see Jesus Christ like you have never seen him before. He becomes an experience. That you're not only speaking because you read a good book. No, you're speaking because you have experienced the God of that book. And I said, God, how will they believe? He said, wait what I'll do through you. I'll vindicate everything. The spirit of godliness is a vindicated spirit. Do you hear that? Such is the confidence that we have toward him. That everything you do must and should be vindicated by the spirit. He calls that the great mystery of godliness. He says he was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of the angels, preached to the Gentiles, believed on the world, received up in glory. He was justified in the spirit, vindicated by the spirit. Whatever the Lord will show you, he will prove himself. Today I came to talk to those who doubted their visions. I came to those who God opened ears long ago, told you things, but something came in the middle here and started confusing the voices. And now you no longer believe the very God you believed when you were 12. The very God who opened your eyes when you were 13. He is, you don't know how to connect to him anymore. When was the last time you actually locked up yourself in a room and started to worship God and you were really taken? Not because you want to, but even when you are fighting, you found yourself taken to a place. When was the last time you felt a certain glory on your life that awakened a God kind of conviction in your spirit? And not because you are transacting with the mere things. But because you've walked enough with God to differentiate the graces. But you have that time with him enough for him to launch you deeper because this I have seen with many ministers there's a point we get and we get so laxed and complacent because the glories around us carry enough provisions to sustain and preserve what men carry already of our image in Christ and we cannot progress beyond that because those glories are enough for men to think of us in a certain light and believe God for the miracle. But we ourselves are not really building ourselves up. That we place a demand on them, but we are not on the altar with them. That when you were poorer, you used to seek God. When there was no money, you used to seek God. When nobody yet knew you, you used to serve God distinctly. But now when the glory came, the comforts came also. God says, don't lose the wonder. Don't lose the wonder. There's still more in God. There is still more in God. There's still more. My time is up. I honestly live with a fear. The fear of how much has been given us and how much were we really able to access through understanding? And what would it look like when a man comes to the full understanding? That perfect man, the measure of the stature of Jesus Christ, what does that man look like? No, no, put the titles aside. Call me apostle or not. But there's that man, the Mount of Transfiguration. Matthew says, 
Peter, John, and James are on the mountain. And then Moses and Elijah are talking to Jesus. And then Peter comes to them. Mark says the same thing, same narrative. John says the same narrative. But when it comes to Luke, and I want you to read Luke's account, this man who understood the order of things. This is the last I'll, I'll finish. Please give me a few minutes. Thank you. Luke chapter 9, verses 29. Mark, Luke, Mark, sorry, Matthew, all of these guys went there. They carried the meaning of that experience through what they were told and what they picked. But listen to what Luke picked. Luke says in verses 29, as he prayed, the appearance of his face was altered, and his robe became white and glistening. And behold, two men talked with him, who were Moses and Elijah. Like Luke and Mark say, but like, like sorry, Mark and Matthew say. And listen to what Luke says. Luke says, who appeared in glory and spoke of his decease, which was about to accomplish. He was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Do you understand what I'm saying? Give me the New Living Translation. Who appeared in glory and they were speaking about his exodus from this world which is about to be fulfilled in Jerusalem. Luke picked something. Mark and Matthew and John never saw. They all carry the account that the Lord Jesus' face was shining and he talked with Elijah and Moses but what was spoken they never knew but there's a man who leaned in there's a man who leaned in enough as of whether he went to ask or it's the question of how he heard that it was spoken before the rest but the other didn't pick that line but Luke had it and the man of understanding knew that it was expedient to even tell us what Moses and Elijah was speaking. This is the right that I carry to go to the Christ and ask him, when they brought that woman caught in adultery, you wrote on the ground, what did you write? Am I communicating to somebody? People are going to be quick to say, this is heresy. How do you know what was written? Oh, they are glorious ones that have not only understood the liberties that are available for them to access it, but some people even know what was written. Hallelujah. And you know that these are the liberties that are hard to expend yourself among men who might never understand you. That if I tell a man I actually read, they'll argue. Understand why Paul says, that I will not, I know it's boastful of me. And then he struggles to speak of his experiences because he fears that either the indifferent might misunderstand him and follow familiar spirits or the assumedly very mature might judge him and disqualify him in the course and therefore the man keeps his testimonies. But this is what I know for sure, that the moment you start walking such places, something starts to vindicate your ministry. Because it's the responsibility of God to introduce you. Because in essence, you reveal him. Yes. If, if you have understood this equation, now the conversation of the template has begun. Because it means we are going to see things men have never seen before. Yes. This thing called I has not seen ear has not had we are going to hear things yes we are on the same altar as god was speaking but i heard deeper oh somebody's ears open my time is up but this is my prayer really God is moving. 
We are going to enter a season of experiences. And I'm talking about balanced experiences. Everything I saw when I was 18 and 19, I'm seeing right now in Fanero. Where Fanero is, is a 19 years old vision, not where I'm at now. Where I'm at is very far. I'm living by a template that was drawn by the Son of God himself. I know my days, I know my beginning, and I know my end. I even know that I will live heaven. I will live for heaven. I know. It's not a mystery. This is the readiness that we should all carry. And stop guessing around whether this is right or no. We have to mature to that place where we can actually experience him for ourselves. That you might experience the love of God that passes mere knowledge without understanding. That's what the Bible says. Read. He says that you may really come to know practically through experience for yourselves, through experience, the love of Christ which far surpasses mere knowledge without experience, that you may be filled through all your being and to all the fullness of God, that you may have the richest measure of the divine presence and become a body wholly filled and flooded with God himself. That it's possible for you, Reverend Julian, Julian, to carry the richest measure of the presence of God. That's more than revival. That's more than revival, Brother Mwangi. When you carry the fullest measure of the divine presence. We are entering seasons where men are going to come to lame people. And the lame will see them and walk. Hey! Am I communicating with somebody? You're going to think of somebody sick and the tumor will leave their body. Because, hey, hey, your concern for that individual is a prayer. And you carry enough force and power to command the presence of healing. Until we can tell our generation that this is possible, we have not begun yet. Now open your mouth and let's speak to God. Just two, three minutes only. Because there's other programs coming. Tell God, open my eyes. I want to see you. I want to experience you. I'm without excuse. I know it's already given. Now help me know how to hear. How to receive it. Put the principles and patterns that are necessary in my life. There's somebody who might say, me, I've never received a vision. That's okay. <laughs> Salvation is an experience. And in a few minutes I have tonight, I feel the liberty and grace to pray that may God release visions for you right now to see your assignment. May God take you through a journey to see the things you missed. And may he open your ears to hear what you missed. Pabonos! Prophets are rising. Apostles are rising. Teachers are rising. Evangelists are rising. The presence of God is here. Yield to God. Just yield. Yield to Him. Yield to Him. Yield to Him. Tell Him, God, take me to a place I've never been before. And without excuse, show me, Lord.
Jesus, there is no one else like you. No one. Jesus, there is no girl, and there is no one. Jesus, there is no one else like you. like we have never been before open our eyes to see what must be seen we strip ourselves of all we know and desire to tap in things we have never known physically because you've told us that they are available for us Paul walked with you and exercised himself in such liberties. Many did not believe Paul. But how is it that we believe Paul's revelation? Because he saw the invisible. He saw the invisible. There's somebody God is opening your eyes to see your ministry. You're seeing yourself in a stadium. It's not last. This is not last. This is real. It's happening right now. Somebody's eyes is opening. You're seeing yourself give answers to governments. Touching their financial connect, turmoil. You're seeing yourself building industries and educating millions. You see yourself on a road going to heal the sick and raising the dead. May God open your eyes and clarify where you missed. And for those who saw, I pray in the name of Jesus and may you receive the strength I stand in the office of a midwife to call out those anointings that have been stale and stagnated. I decree and I declare this is the season, this is the year, this is the time. You cannot be healed. There are people here who are nobodies. But Rema Fist is the beginning of a journey where you will have to run away from the attention of men because of the glory, anointing, and mandate God has placed on your life. Receive it, somebody. Somebody say, God, show me my lineage, show me my pattern. Show me my course which I have in Christ. So I don't mix things in me. Bring a clarity of course and purpose. That I will know what to follow. And the voices that connect to my line. This is important. Because there is somebody lost. Because you are seeking in the places. Where your mandate is not. There are people standing in wrong offices. You are ordained in a wrong office. You are ushered in a wrong anointing. Nothing opens to you because you're never truly defined by God himself. 
and this is the journey and mandate that begins the clarity of your purpose may God himself speak to you thank you Lord Jesus if you're sick in your body receive your healing now receive your healing if you came with a swelling it disappears now if you are crippled whether you're in a wheelchair or with a clutch you just walk if you came with any aid you just drop it and walk in the name of Jesus because the vindication of the Spirit is available to affirm all truth in Christ if you came with any bondage God is delivering you witchcraft has no power over you in the name of Jesus father we submit ourselves to you to take us places show us reveal to us that when we return back next year there will be an evidence that the truth worked in our lives from today we're going to behold the invisible we're going to see things that cannot be seen. We're going to experience a God that has never been experienced before. Because it's already in our inheritance and given a foe. Now it's to yield, submit, pray and seek his face. That the manifestation of those things will be sure in the physical realm. If Africa can understand this, we're not going to be limited. The Spirit of God says, let's continue in prayer. Let's continue in prayer. The Spirit of God says, just a few more minutes. 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 A few more minutes. Something is happening. Something is happening. I sense it. Something is happening. 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 The Spirit of God is flowing. Just a few more minutes. If you're sick in your body, your miracle happens now. Now. If you're next to somebody with a wheelchair clutch, tell them walk. We don't even need to pray about that. It's done. Swellings are disappearing right now. Somebody has been feeling a swelling in your right side of your stomach God heals you now somebody had a swelling in your breast your right breast God is healing you now spirits of death I rebuke you early death we rebuke you Marine spirits, Magini, we arrest you right now in the name of Jesus. You're destroyed in the name of Jesus. There are people who have been saying, I've been struggling to see in the spirit realm. Receive that 
supernatural sight. Receive that supernatural sight. Supernatural. Supernatural. Revelation of insight is settling on somebody. You're going to see things in the word like you have never imagined. You're going to hear the voice in a clarity like you have never imagined. Receive it in the name of Jesus. There's somebody, God is taking you to a place in the spirit realm. And I see that the instruction of your calling and mandate receives that pure clarity that you will testify one day and say, I was in Rema and that is when God told me exactly what he wanted of me. Witchcraft has no place in your life. <laughs> All manner of witchcraft is destroyed in the name of Jesus. I raise my faith with every pastor who has believed God for growth. Growth. Those faithful men and women who are toiling night and day and have sacrificed even the school fees of their children. Abandon those great jobs to serve you. Let this be the season, Lord, for them to experience such supernatural growth in their personal ministries to the glorification of your name. Whatever is required for readiness, whether it's wisdom or revelation or experience, give it in the name of Jesus. Because there are men here and women whose hearts are truly only sold out to you, Lord. That it's easy to judge them, but honestly, they are doing the best they know how. Father, visit our ministries. Let us see such supernatural experiences and exploits. Let us see power like we have never seen before. Let us close services and people refuse to go back home. Because the presence on our altars captivates them to stay and linger. For the Bible says they shall come and say let us go with you for the Lord is with you. May the secret of God set on your life so distinctly as it settled on Job. For the Bible says, when I went out in the gates and when I sat my seat in the city, that means he possessed the gates and the thrones of Israel. May you not only possess the gates of your nation, but the thrones thereof, the powers, the principles and laws that command and foster change. May you be, be behind every growth every transformation of your nation, every progress of your people. May your name be mentioned on the tables of advancement and advantage. When they're looking for an answer, when they're looking for a solution, may they turn to the church in the name of Jesus Christ. May God give you such wisdom and experience that they will not ignore your counsel. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Give him a mighty hand of praise. Why don't you raise your hands to the heavens? Raise your hands to the heavens as my father comes. Come on, let's, let's lift up our hands together. 
I bless the name of the Lord because of the ministry that we have just received tonight. Now, come on, give the Lord a bigger hand than that because... Things have happened in this place. I say things have happened in this place. Destinies have been rearranged. Lives have been changed. Diseases have been healed. Sicknesses have been healed. Tumors have disappeared. Creepers are walking. Blood pressure has been normalized. Yeah, let them... Let them just come. There are people who are not walking who are beginning to walk. One is just coming here right now. Tell a neighbor for me, neighbor. Look for a neighbor who received the word tonight. Tell him, neighbor, from tonight, what you carry cannot be hidden, must be manifested in Jesus' name. They just let him walk, let him walk, let him walk. In the name of Jesus, let him walk. Let him walk. In Jesus' name, let him walk. Let him walk, let him walk. In the name of Jesus. Oh, la Kayanda. Come on, raise a praise, raise a shout. Bless the name of the Lord. I said, bless the name of the Lord. That is what the Lord can do. That's why they say, what you have waited for has come to pass. See what the Lord has done. Tell your neighbor, see what the Lord has done. What we have waited for has come to pass. Now let him push it. Pastor Don, let him push it. Let him push the wheelchair. Give it to him, let him push it. In the name of Jesus. You push it. You came sitting on it. Now you push it yourself. In the name of Jesus. You push it yourself. Oh, la kayanda la baba toliba. See what the Lord has done. See what the Lord has done. One more time, see what the Lord has done. another testimony right here. Listen, let me tell you something. Check yourself. I said check yourself. Because there are hundreds upon thousands of miracles that have happened in this service tonight. Even those of you watching us online, check yourself right there. Put it on Facebook. Put it on YouTube what the Lord has done in your life because the Lord has done miracles all over. Come on, let's give him a shout and a praise.
One, two. Bishop, this is an amazing testimony that this man has not left the bed for the last three years. He has been paralyzed from head to toe. That man was pushing that wheelchair. Yes. Has this... not left his bed for the last three years. That's the testimony we are getting here. And you just now saw him, Pastor T, pushing his own wheel, wheelchair right here. Pastors, what you are seeing here tonight will be happening in your churches. I say it will be happening in your churches. Let May miracles begin to pop like popcorn all over. I said all over. I say all over. Tomorrow, go to your doctor. Let, let them check you out. And you shall confirm what the Lord has done. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Let us be seated. We want to transition. Are my ushers nearby? Ushers, are you there? I want us to receive an offering right now. To Nachukua Sadaka, the pay bill number will go there. there. There is that star 334 hash. The pay bill is 809-200. Account is RF 2024. Ashers have got envelopes. Please pass them on. Ashers have got envelopes. If you need an envelope, kwa nijia kuna wengine wetu, lazima tuwane bahasha. Go to toy sadaka. Utapua bahasha. If you are writing a, a check, write to the purpose center church the purpose center church if you're writing a check because some of the money some of you have been touched by god to give cannot fit on mpesa it only it's only a check that can release mpesa is now is limited so write a check to the purpose center church if you have got cash need an envelope ushers please distribute envelopes quickly i thought one of this musician play some music oh there are some musicians here can you play some music guitar waswahili wanasema wimbo mzuri unamtoa nyoka pangoni na wimbo mzuri itatoa pesa mfukoni can you get some music here can you play something all your all machines are off. Pastor George, Reverend George, come back here. So we are, we are receiving an offering right now. Let me pray for that. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because you have said in your word that you went with them, confirming the word with signs. And that's what you are doing here tonight. Confirming your word with signs and wonders. And some of these signs shall follow your people. Even those watching online. Those who shall watch this preaching. Even in the days to come as a replay. May the same power manifested in this place. Manifest even at that time. And as your people stretch forth their hands. To give to the cause of this work. May you bless every giver. May you prosper every giver. May whatever they release tonight be a seed into good ground. And from this moment, let them begin to expect a harvest. And let it come back to them. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over in Jesus' mighty name. And together we say, and again we say, Let's receive Reverend George Macharia.
to continue, then I'll come and introduce the next speaker. Thank you, Bishop. Let's put our hands together for Bishop J.B. Masinde, a father in this land and a man that we highly, highly respect. We bless the Lord for you, sir. Um, just a few notices this evening, as even as we give our offerings, please remember that the Apostle Joshua Selman yesterday said that we come with a prayer request this evening, and uh, we have some receptacles that are uh, across everywhere in this arena that are ready for you. So immediately after we have finished giving our offerings this evening, what we are going to do is that we are going to take those um, prayer requests and we are going to put them in this um, receptacle. They are called prayer boxes. That's where we are going to put them. They are spread across this whole arena in Jesus' mighty name. I also want to bring to our notice that um, there is a child that has been found. Um, they are not lost. I think they lost their parents. One as if it, their parents were lost somewhere. Um, and um, they are autistic, so they are not able to speak. And so if you have a child of that nature, to my left, there is a tent that is there. Please go and find that child this evening in Jesus' name. I'll say that again. There's a child that has been found. We are not able to communicate to that child because they are autistic and uh, we are not able to get any information. And so we are requesting you if you are a parent and uh, maybe your child walked and uh, you know who they are. Uh, please come to my left. There is a tent and uh, you will find that child there. But we are believing God this evening that that child will not live here the same again in Jesus' mighty name. They shall talk and the parents shall bring a testimony in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you believe it, why don't you shout a big amen? Uh, that's not a believing amen. Let's shout a bigger amen in Jesus' mighty name. That white tent to my left. Are there parents who have lost a child? Can you identify yourselves? I, I don't like this child missing matter things. Um, you said the baby is autistic. How old, roughly? He's not able to talk. I need a parent to identify themselves. Uh, I don't want to bring the child here if they're... Yeah, don't, don't bring the child here. Not right now, they'll be terrified. I don't, which, which team is this about to sing? I don't want you to change the atmosphere. Okay? Staki mubadlishi atmosphere. Staki to dance. There's a healing grace going on right now. So I don't want us to disrupt that atmosphere. So just sing, but don't change the atmosphere. If I hear you changing it, I'll remove you. And I learn it to I want news whether that baby, come Pastor George, I just want news whether that baby, someone has come. You know people can take someone else's child to their house. So we have to know. So I'll wait for an update and then I'll give you an update. But I was hoping. Yeah, let me get more. Please, if you've come with your child, especially at night, the sister has found her. Okay, good. That, that's good. Thank you. Let's give God praise for that. Please, if you're here with, a, with your children, keep them with you. It's now dark 
and everyone should be responsible for their children. There's over 100,000 of you here. Stay with your child, please. I don't want anybody to let go of their child, especially if you came believing God for healing. We don't want any of you to have that kind of report. So please keep your children close to you as much as possible. Amen. 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 Thank you, Reverend Julian. Amen. We bless the Lord this evening for his grace and for his mercies. Something is happening at the back. I'll request us now to stand on our feet as we go to the next part of this service in the name of Jesus Christ and even as the worship team. I think I scared those guys. I think miracles are happening everywhere. Come, Pastor George, I'm sorry. Allow me to just disrupt a little bit. I'm so sensitive. This atmosphere is so necessary. So I wasn't chasing them away. I'm so sorry if I sounded rude. But do you agree we don't want this atmosphere interfered with, right? Can we just flow? Uh, I don't, they're telling me the giving has not ended. So I don't want people to rise yet. Let them finish the giving. They'll give, a, they'll give you a report. You'll have to sing for us. Since the team has gone, you have to sing for us. Please, I'm so sorry, Your Excellency. Forgive us for making you stand and sit. Forgive us. Um, forgive us, everyone. Let's just worship. Let's just continue. See what the Lord has done. What we've waited has caused. <laughs> I'm seeing crutches. <laughs> hey, I'm seeing crutches. Can they come? Oh, yeah, yeah, Dabas. <laughs> There's some crutches that are being lifted all the way. They are coming running. They are coming to the altar running. Hey, somebody celebrate this house. Sebrosekata la brosia. Malbrasta la brosia kando. There they come. There they come. There they come. Rama Fist 2024. Zakala la bosi akanda la babuchi. Come on, somebody celebrate in this house. Hallelujah. Look and see what the Lord has done. The man is coming with his own crutches, lifting them up. Shadabaha celebrosi akanda, malpres telebrosi kanta la busika, shadris talabrosi kata la brosi akanda, sebris talabrosi akanda la baba baba baba.
somebody would you just take a minute and thank God for what is happening here tonight with your hands lifted up to the sky hallelujah Go ahead. Ongea tu Kiswahili baba. Iko tu sawa. Mliko na yeye jana. Glory to God.
were just standing here as small boys waiting for their daddy to come. He said he's introducing the next speaker. So we're waiting for our father. Maybe another miracle can continue while we wait for him. So we'll just worship. We're waiting for daddy to come so that we move to the next phase of the meeting. Oof. Please have your blessed seats in Christ Jesus. We're going to do two things as we get ready for the last session of Rema Feast 2024. We want to thank all our friends for being such an amazing support because after this we won't disrupt anything that will take place here. Um, we want to thank all the churches that have participated in making Rema Feast possible. All the pastors that have left their churches and given us time the whole week to be here. Thank you. And we also want to thank all the apostles, reverends, bishops, prophets. We want to thank all the various groups that have participated. I'm having such a hard time doing this. So I just say thank you. Thank you to the different television channels. We had over 20 different television channels here. We had different suppliers. I want to say something about one particular supplier. A lady by the name of Dr. Susan and her entire team from Omnispace and Silverwinds. I want to say thank you. They've taken such good care of us and she's proved to be a partner we would want to work with um, even in the future. So thank you very much to Guru Nanak Hospital, to Nairobi West Hospital, to Metropolitan Hospital, to Mama Margaret Hospital, to Ohai Nema Hospital, to RFH Hospital. Thank you to Silver Sky, to Jamin Cleaning Solutions, Thank you to Surprise Me and Jackie Morky. Thank you to Coca-Cola, to Unilever, to Britain. Thank you, KCB and Safaricom. Thank you, Kingdom TV, Elevate TV, Hope Media, Sitam Online, MBCI, One Accord, All Time TV, Zoe TV, Pearl Radio, Standard Group, Star Times TV, and All Times TV. Wow. Thank you to the, all the organizing teams. I want to one, I really want to believe that there's an amazing group if I leave out. Yesterday, Apostle Solomon was teaching us that saying thank you is very important. And I've been getting a lot of people saying, thank you, Reverend Julian, thank you, Reverend Julian. But let me tell you, there's a team that was behind this and I want to say to them, thank you. To the entire secretariat, Please stand on your feet, led by our very able chair, Pastor Pete Karyoki. I want you all to appreciate this man and his entire team, the secretariat, for what they've done, for making this so possible. Uh, they did an amazing job in the secretariat. Prayers were going on, work was going on, they were planning this. Thank you. They have fed all the co-workers. We had over 2,500 co-workers and volunteers fed, taken care of. Thank you to the hospitality team. Thank you for all the work you've done. Thank you to the heads of departments for the amazing work that you have done. Life Church Limuru, thank you. Thank you to the R Collective. Thank you to Sounds of Worship, Karura Voices, DCU Moja, 
TPB Purity at Yano Bethu, Tony Moasia, uh, Gelelo. Thank you. Thank you to every one of you. Thank you to the Roak Assemblies, all the pastors from Roak. Uh, thank you to Deliverance Church, Kingdom Seekers, City Lighters Church, Fortress Assembly, and Parklands Baptist that gave us so much support. Rehearsals late at night and the things that people needed to do. This was not the work of just one church. This is a collective work of the kingdom. Thank you to Kingdom Commonwealth. And if you have not yet joined the Kingdom Commonwealth, you better join. Tell your neighbor you better join. Thank you to Beulah City and to AMS Properties. Thank you to Beulah Heights University and to Live Ad, our billboard partners. We want to say thank you. A very special thank you to Her Excellency, the wife to our Deputy President for making the time tonight to grace us with your presence. Thank you. We don't take it for granted. We want to thank the speakers that have graced this occasion. Thank you to my spiritual father, Bishop J.B. Masinde. Thank you for blessing us with amazing wisdom. Thank you to Apostle T. Mwangi for blessing us with such amazing wisdom. Amen. Amen. Thank you to Apostle John Sego who has had to leave. Thank you to Apostle Dennis Wambugu for being with us and leading us through amazing time. Thank you to Bishop Mark Karaoke for a wonderful word that he delivered to us. And thank you to Apostle, to Pastor Poju Oyemade, who also shared amazing insights. And thank you to my friend, Apostle Grace Lubega. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And finally tonight, I want to invite my father to come and bring up a speaker for tonight, the man of God. But while he's doing that, did you carry your requests? Did you carry your prayer requests? Did you carry your prayer request? There are going to be some uh, bins that have been distributed around. We ask you put your prayer requests in those bins so that as Apostle is ministering to us, he asked to pray for those requests and I know that he will take time to do that tonight. So please, I ask the ushers to help us make sure that there are enough receptacles all around. There are too many of you to ask you to bring the requests here. But please put them in those receptacles so that we can collect them and bring them here to the altar at the time of prayer. So I need someone to guide me. Do we have other receptacles? They're there? All around. Good. Excellent. Papa. You look sharp, all of you. My God, I like those colors. Praise God. You are just exposing where Julian comes from when you see those colors. Oh, this is a coat of many colors. Praise the name of the Lord. Tell your neighbor, we thank you also for making this possible. Because if we organized all of this, brought it all these tents, brought in all these chairs, and you did not come, it would have been in vain. So can you give yourselves a hand for coming from Uganda, DRC, Zambia, coming from Tanzania, Barbados, Latvia, Ethiopia. Yes, just give a big hand for all of us. Kenya, come on, give a hand that we came from all over. Praise the name of the Lord. I said praise the name of the Lord. We want to thank God that in this conference, 
Your Excellency God has given us choice servants that have come from all over the world, both locally, Europe, Africa, and uh, East Africa. And now there's a grace that has been released in this generation, a voice that many of us have learned to receive from, hear from, and we pay attention when he speaks because he carries a word 